Hi students, welcome to Study Smart Channel. I am Chegu Jennifer here and today we are going to study Chapter 1 of Form 2 Science Biodiversity. I will be sharing some Study Smart tips, so make sure you watch this video until the end. Okay, before we start the class, let's see what are the topics we are going to cover in this class. We are going to study the definition of biodiversity, its importance and the classifications of animals and plants. So let's start. Okay, first let's see what is meant by the word biodiversity. The word biodiversity can be divided into two segments which are bio and diversity. Bio is referring to the living things while diversity as we all know referring to various or different types. Together, the word biodiversity referring to the variety of living organisms in a given ecosystem. This includes the diversity of the species itself, genetic diversity within the species and the diversity of ecosystem. Anyway, do you know that biodiversity can only possible if there are different types of habitat and climate in the world? For example, Penguin is exist only because there is cold weather climate at certain parts of the world like Antarctica. Without the cold weather climate, there is no possible for penguin to exist in the world. So take some time to think will you able to survive if there is no biodiversity in this world? Will you able to eat only one type of food in your entire life? Hmm, are you able to eat only chicken for your entire life? I'm sure you know the answer and for me it's a big no. So let's see, apart from providing us with delicious different types of food, in what other ways biodiversity making our life interesting? Okay, so the first importance is definitely all the delicious food that biodiversity can provide us. But not only in terms of food, biodiversity also helping to ensure there is a balance in nature by allowing different types of interaction among living organisms and allowing life cycles such as oxygen cycle, carbon cycle and nutrient cycle to take place. Other than that, because of biodiversity, we are able to enjoy going to recreational places. Recently, I went to a forest reserve at Negeri Sembilan and it was so peaceful to do the hiking surrounded by different types of trees and animals. This was made possible due to the biodiversity in that forest. Also, due to biodiversity, we are able to get medical benefits from various herbs that have the healing properties. Other than that, the bamboo plant and timber woods can be used to produce wooden furniture and musical instruments. Finally, biodiversity allows scientists and researchers to conduct experiments and research on the various type of plants and animals. This creates job opportunity and eventually improve educational and economic sector of a country. Alright, I hope you all understand well on the importance of biodiversity. Now let's move on the classification of animals. We can easily classify animals into two bigger parts, vertebrates and invertebrates. Vertebrates are those animals with backbone, while invertebrates are those without backbone. There are five types of vertebrates, namely mammal, bird, reptile, amphibians, and fish. As for the invertebrates, we can classify them into two categories. One is invertebrates with legs, and another one is invertebrate without legs. Each of these categories we can classify further based on the number of legs and the type of the body. Let's look into the vertebrates into detail. I always advise my students to remember at least three characteristics of each group of vertebrate animals. This will help them to score easily in this type of questions in their exam. So, let's see the mammals first. This is the most easiest one to remember as we human beings are also under the category of mammal. If you know about your own body, then you can easily score here. Alright, the very first characteristic of mammals are they are warm-blooded which also known as homeothermic animal. So what does it mean by warm-blooded and homeothermic? It is referring to animals that are able to regulate their body temperature internally, which means they are able to maintain a constant body temperature regardless of the temperature of their surrounding. 
Mammals also give birth to young and breed through lungs. The example of mammals are human being, lion, tiger, whales and dolphin as they all are warm-blooded, give birth to young and breed through lungs. Can you think of a mammal that does not give birth to young? Think about it. I will let you know the answer at the end of this video. Alright, now let's move on the second vertebrate, birth. Similar to mammals, birds are warm-blooded too. However, they lay eggs. It is common for us to see bird eggs on trees near our housing areas. When you see something by yourself, it is easy for you to remember them compared to you just memorize the words. The second characteristic of birds are they breathe through lungs just like mammals. So now let's move into fish before we go into the amphibians and reptile. Unlike mammals and birds, all other vertebrates are cold-blooded or known as poikilothermic animals including fish. Fish also lay eggs and they breed through gills. Okay, moving on to reptiles. Here comes our smart tip. We can easily remember the animals under reptile category by assuming the letter R in reptile referring to run away. This means that when you see a reptile animal, you tend to run away because it's either too dangerous or it just looks too scary to look at. With this in mind, the most common example for reptile animal are cro crocodile and snake. You're definitely not going to pet these animals when you see one, right? That's why the R for reptile stands for runaway. Now you know the examples of animals under the reptile category. Let's see their characteristics. Reptiles are cold-blooded animals. They lay eggs and they breed through lungs. I believe most of us have seen documentaries showing snake eggs at some point in our life. If you never seen one, go search in Google for snake eggs. As I mentioned earlier, when you see or experience something, high chances you will remember them instead of you just memorizing the words from textbook. So yeah, do yourself some favor by searching for them in the internet or better still, you can go to the zoo to see them by yourself. Here we come to the last vertebrate type which is amphibians. The most common example for amphibians are frog. Most students tend to confuse between amphibians and reptile. I hope with my smart tip for the reptile earlier, you guys will never have a confusion after this. Frogs are cold-blooded and they lay eggs. Their breathing method is quite unique as they breathe using gills when they are small and use lung or moist skin when they grow, grow up. Alright, now let's discuss about invertebrate animals. We can categorize them based on the number of legs they pose. Animals such as ant, bees, butterfly have three pairs of legs, while centipedes, crab and spiders have more than three pairs of legs. Now is for the classification of plants. We can classify plants into flowering and non-flowering plants. The flowers of the flowering plant will grow into fruits and those fruits will have seeds inside them. The seeds have cotyledon which used to store food for the seed to grow into a new plant. The cotyledon can be classified into monocotyledon and dicotyledon. Monocotyledon referring to one cotyledon, while dicotyledon referring to two cotyledons. So let's see the characteristic of monocotyledon plant first. Monocotyledon plants tend to have parallel vein leaf, soft stem, and fibrous root. As for dicotyledon, they will have a network like vein leaf, woody stem, and tap root. Can you give me an example of monocotyledon and dicotyledon plant that you have seen before? Have fun thinking about that. Alright, now we come to the non-flowering plants. The example for non-flowering plants are moss, fern and conifer. They are under this category because they do not have the seeds for reproduction purpose. Mosses and fern reproduce through spores while conifer reproduce using cones. Alright students, we have reached the end of today's topic. So before we finish the class, let's do some recap. So first of all, we study about the definition of biodiversity 
as I mentioned, biodiversity is just a combination of bio and diversity. So, which means that different type of living things. Then we study the importance of biodiversity. The very first important that we study was biodiversity able to provide different type of food for human beings. We also studied about the classification of animals, whether they are vertebrates animal or invertebrates animal. And finally, we study the classification of plants, whether they are flowering or non-flowering plant. Flowering plant can be categorized further into monocotyledon or dicotyledon plants. So, we have already done with the recap. I hope you understand the topic that we discussed today. Okay, students. Now is the time for some interesting smart answer. If you still remember, I got asked, which mammals does not give birth to young in the earlier slides? So, have you found the answer yet? Okay, I'm sure that you already found the answer or you might be already have some thinking about what is the correct answer. So, let me do some revelation on what is the actual answer. Platypus. Yes, platypus is the mammal that does not give birth to young because they will be laying eggs. So, those who get the answer correct, congratulations. And for those who got it wrong, do not worry. You have learned something new today. Alright, students. That's all from me, Chugu Jennifer. Thank you for staying with me until the end of the class. I hope you all really got benefit from all the explanation and the details that I have shared earlier. So, let's meet up again in the second chapter of Form 2 Science Ecosystem. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.